Okay, for the first one, which is Von Gerke's disease, this is what, you, what I want you to think of when you think of this. It's a really, really fat baby with um, fat like um, cheeks and um, short extremities with a protuberant abdomen because of hepatomegaly, and his name is Von. So let's so remember this and from here let's get into it. So basically in G6PD deficiency you have a deficiency in glucose 6 phosph glucose 6 phosphatase which is the enzyme that converts glucose 6 phosphate into glucose. And why this is so important is because this is uh, this is the last step in gluconeogenesis as well as it's a um irreversible step. See, when you have this one, it's reversible. This is irre irre irreversible. And the other reason why is when you're in periods of fasting, you can break down glycogen to get to glucose. So you can go through glycogenolysis and then gluconeogenesis and all that. But if you don't have this enzyme, you're not going to be able to make glucose and therefore you're always going to be hypoglycemic or just really um, with low energy and um, so this is this is the pathway that goes from glycogen to um, glucose 1-phosphate um, there and then glucose 6-phosphate and so on and so forth but the main thing that we're going to focus on is this okay so now as far as the symptoms uh, symptoms are concerned okay the one thing you have to remember is that phosphate is an intracellular Phosphate is intracellular. So whenever there's a um, buildup of phosphate, it literally pulls the water into the cell. And because of that, you're going. So so now what's happening is because glucose six phosphate isn't able to convert into glucose, glucose six phosphate is going to build up in the liver. Remember liver, kidney, and bone. That's all we're dealing with. And liver is one of the um, main organs where all these metabolic pathways happen, where biochemistry is literally the powerhouse in that organ. So in the liver, so in the liver, in the cells of the liver, you have glucose 6-phosphate, which has a phosphate. Now, because it can't convert it into glucose, which is extracellular, or like it's going to push it out through the um, uh, GLUT2 transporter, um, it's just going to build up with the phosphate is going to pull the water into the cell and the cell is going to expand, which results in hepatomegaly. So now I have a deficiency in glucose 6-phosphatase, buildup of glucose 6-phosphate, which is pulling the water into the cell. Now I'm getting hepatomegaly. Now when my liver is affected, all of its functions are being affected. So let's start with the most common one. I can't make glucose, so I'm going to be hypoglycemic and... Um, because of that, I'm going to start um, presenting earlier in life. And that's why Vaughn is a fat baby. Because I'm not going to have proper glucose, now I can't make energy for my extremities. I can't make energy for, like, I just can't grow. So that's why he's going to have short stature, um, thin, very thin extremities. That's one thing. And remember, it's autosomal recessive, as all enzyme deficiencies are. Okay, so now back to liver. So now you have um, hypoglycemia out of the way, hepatomegaly, we've understood. Now back to the liver when it's being affected. Remember in the um, transport system of um, chylomicrons, um, lipoproteins, and cholesterol, because Lipopro uh, sorry, LDL is one of the cholesterols that's out in the bloodstream. It gets pulled back into the liver. But if my liver isn't functioning properly, the liver is not going to pull the lipids back in. So now I just have a buildup of lipids in my bloodstream leading to hyperlipidemia. And because of um, because now I can't make glucose, so now I'm going to be in some whatever glucose he has, he's just going to keep breaking down, just like he's going to keep breaking down glycogen. So, but it's going to be an anaerobic state. It's going to be anaerobic glycolysis. Remember that.
anaerobic glycolysis is important because what happens is one of the byproducts of that is lactic acidosis. So now he's going to have lactic acidosis as well. And remember in the kidneys, in the renal tubular cells, um, this is a, this is something that I'm, this is a concept I'm still struggling with, so don't quote me on this, but you're going to have a competition of the uric acid and the lactic acid for the renal um, tubular cells, like to kind of exc excrete out these acids. But because you have a buildup of lactic acid, that's what's going to win versus uric acid. And I, and I'm assuming you have a buildup of uric acid just because all your other systems are dysfunctional. Um, whatever it is, you have a buildup of uric acid, so then you're going to get hyperuricemia as well. The only other thing that um, I forgot to mention is that because you can't convert it into glucose, you're going to have a buildup of glycogen, um, the structure of glycogen specifically in the liver. And now that we covered all the symptoms, you know, you should know Juan Garquis really well. And for, as far as treatment is concerned, always give a nasogastric infusion of glucose because they're going to be constantly hypoglycemic, as well as um, be careful of... Um, um, uh, uric acid so you might need to give them allopurinol to lower uric acid but this is basically von Gerke's in a nutshell so now let's move on to type 2 which is Pompey's which is Pompey's however you want to pronounce it which is kind of actually one of my favorites <laughs>